Hey y'all, welcome to the channel again. I um, hope you're all doing well today. I'm actually doing okay myself. Uh, I just thought today I might, uh, for Wildcard Wednesday, just something random to talk about. I thought I might introduce y'all to little Shaggy. There he is. <laughs> he, um, he's had like, a really interesting life. Uh, he's, he'll be 19 years old on November the 18th. And I've had him since he was about four weeks old. Just a perfect little companion. He's uh, it's been all over. Like I said, I've had him since he was about four weeks old. When he was about, uh, I guess, three months old, about three months old or so, November, December, January, February, March, he was four months old. When he was four months old, uh, I went to Alaska to do my first tour guiding job there in Alaska. and. Uh, I had a new puppy. I can barely well leave him at home. So I, I called up the manager of the place where I was going to be working and asked her if I would be able to bring my little dog with me. And she said yes, that would be no problem. So she put me up in a little cabin out in the middle of the woods, um, out in the middle of nowhere, so that I could have uh, Shaggy with me. Uh, when I went to work, like I said, I lived way out in the middle of nowhere. What's the matter? Oh, camera, look. Look into that camera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I'm gonna put him down. <laughs> Just could find him a place to sleep or something. Um, so when he was uh he was just like I said, a few months old. I took him to Alaska, I lived out in the middle of nowhere in a little cabin. And so uh I would um uh, when I was gone during the day, um I, I left my cabin at about 5.30 in the morning or so. I put him in his little um, crate, little, little bag, basket thing that I had. Uh, and I, I slipped upstairs in a, in a loft, so I would put him up there and um, give him some water and everything. And then I would go and, and do my first tour, and I would be back in about three hours. And um, take him out and do all that stuff, and then feed him and everything, and walk him. And then I would... Um, put his, put some fresh water, put him back in his little bag when I left, go do my second tour, which was another three hours or so, three and a half hours, and then I would come back and do the same thing, and then I would do my third tour of the day. I usually had three tours a day, and that was a um, covered horse wagon tour, <laughs> which, uh, which was a lot of fun. But when I, when I flew there, um, I got one of those carry bags that you could carry them in, and I put him in that. And, and before I before I flew out to Alaska, I actually got him, you know, acclimated to it. He got used to it. He loved sleeping in it. So when we actually had to fly out there on the plane, he uh, he was used to it, and he just slept all the way there, just about when we would stop. He was he was always um, potty trained. He basically potty trained himself with my other three dogs that I had. I had three big dogs. I had a Great Pyrenees and um, Wolf Husky mix. And I had a Chow. And I had a full sized um, Collie. And that Collie taught him a lot. He, uh, we had a little step up that went into our kitchen. And we didn't allow our dogs in the kitchen. So he, uh, he started to go up the little steps to go in the kitchen one day. And my Collie, Rio, just took his paw and very gently shoved him off the step letting him know that that was off limits. He couldn't go in the kitchen, and he never, ever tried to go in the kitchen again. So, uh, he taught him that. <laughs> and like I said, he also learned, you know, potty training from the other dogs. Now, I did go ahead and um, kind of train him a little bit on, on paper, too, when he was really little, so that when I was ready to fly out to Alaska, um, uh, if I couldn't take him outside of the airport or whatever, I had other other ways. Um, so I would just, uh, I carried newspaper with me and some wipes, some bleach wipes, and yeah. I would just take him in the ladies room and put some paper on the floor and he would go there and then I'd, you know, use bleach wipes on the floor yeah. and put the paper, roll the paper up and put it in a, in a bag and yeah. tie it up and put it in the garbage. Yeah. So he flew very well. People didn't even know I had yeah. a plane. You know, I just got on a plane and stuck him under the seat, and he slept the whole way there. Yeah. And um, 
He loved it there. He had yeah. other little doggy friends. Other people had brought their dogs also. Um, that's one of the really yeah. great things about you know working yeah. um, tour season in Alaska. You can at a lot of the places. Yeah. Depending on the housing situation, you can take your pets with you. Yeah. Um, so we went there and we stayed in Alaska for that first season and flew back. Same thing with flying back. He did very well. He, uh, you know, we use it on the paper and everything. Um, he never chewed up anything. He was a good dog. He never, ever chewed anything. You know, he never chewed, chewed my shoes or the side of a couch or <laughs> anything like that. When I first got him, he only weighed about three pounds and he weighs about eight and a half now. And he is a Chihuahua and Karen Terrier mix. Um, he's been, like I said, been a really good dog. Um, he hasn't had a lot of health problems. He does have uh, food allergies and he's allergic to like fresh, fresh mowed grass and things like that. As he gets older, his allergies get a little bit worse. But he, uh, he hasn't really had a lot of health problems. Um, a few years ago, I, I, I took him and he had an experimental rabies um, thing that they like blowed into their nose. It was like, it's like she blew through a straw or something. <laughs> I don't know, but she blew the rabies shot into his nose. And when she did that, he like jerked and, and hollered and everything. And she wasn't real, she wasn't real gentle about it. She was just kind of aggravated at him and yelled at him and stuff. You know, I'm like, I thought that was uh, uncalled for. But anyway, um, shortly after he got that rabies thing bloated in his nose, he started having a lot of teeth problems. His teeth all went bad and he's lost most of his teeth um, since that time. He just recently lost another one of his canine teeth. And I, I think, I don't know, I, I feel like that whatever was in that rabies vaccine was something that um, made his teeth yeah. bad for some reason. I don't know what. Um, that, like I said, he doesn't have a lot of health issues. Um, he was eating a food and he started getting yeah. allergies from that food. So I figured they probably started putting something in it that they weren't putting in it before. Yeah. So I tried another food, same thing. He ate it for a little while and then started having allergies yeah. from it. So I decided to yeah. start um, using, and he can't chew anything either. He's, his, he doesn't have hardly any yeah. meat left, so I um I started just boiling hamburger meat and mashing it yeah. up into a, a dog food texture. It's yeah. it's like dog food. It's just pure hamburger meat with some honey in yeah. it. And sometimes I'll boil chicken and chop it yeah. up and put it in it too. But um, sometimes chicken yeah. makes him itch also. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I have to be very careful with what he eats. Yeah. Um, he's an yeah. amazing little dog. He loves Christmas lights. Yeah. Um, my mom and I moved, uh, lived out west in my van yeah. for a year. Um, our Christmas time, I, I went, yeah. to, um, went to Big Lots, and, yeah. and I got this little Christmas tree that fit perfectly in my little back window. And I put some of those electric yeah. or battery-operated lights on it, and he would lay there every night when I had it on, and he would just fall asleep watching the Christmas lights. So he loves Christmas. Um, he doesn't hear anymore. He doesn't hear at all anymore, but he uh, still sees pretty good sometimes. If he's out in the sun for a long time and he comes in, he doesn't see very well. But um, back when he could hear really well, you could say, oh, it's almost Christmas time. And he would just get so excited. He would just shake all over. He'd be so excited. And then he'd get all the Christmas decorations out. He'd start putting stuff up. And he was like, oh, it's getting Christmas. And then um, I always, yeah. you know, bought his presents and wrapped them. And he knew exactly which ones were his presents yeah. under the tree. And if you got yeah. his present, he would he would bark at you and uh, yeah. try to attack you for getting his presents. He does. Yeah. He opens his own presents. The last couple of years, it's kind of worn him down yeah. a little bit. So um, I've been getting him less presents. Yeah. Because it's just it's just too much for him to open a whole bunch of presents. But I used to give him a whole bunch of presents. Uh, when he was little, he also yeah. um, had a basket yeah. full of toys, 
all kinds of toys. He actually would, um, when he got finished playing with his toys, before we would go to bed at night, um, I would tell him, okay, pick up your toys. And he would actually go around the whole living room and pick up his toys and put them in the basket. So he actually cleaned up his toys better than most children do. <laughs> uh, a lot of toys. Um, he had one particular one that I got for Christmas one year. It was with Miss Possum. And... This is Miss Possum. You can see, <laughs> she looks like she has mange or something. But this, and then my uh, my collie actually chewed her tail off <laughs> when uh, when I first got it. First got it. Uh, we named her Miss Possum, and um, she's been like his wife's girlfriend, whatever. Um, that's the only thing in the world that he has ever, you know, humped like little boy dogs do. <laughs> he's never done it to anybody or anything else just that possum right there and um yeah so we called that his wife she's still with him after all this time and she's probably 18 years old <laughs> but he still has her and he has still has a lot of his other toys also um he doesn't play a whole lot anymore he's just you know like i said he'll be 19 years old in november so he's not a big uh Playful little guy. We did take him to the to the river yesterday, though, and uh, pretty cold water. But he got in it and he loved it. Got in there and swam around. When he was little when I first took him to Alaska and everything. I would be gold panning in the creek or the river or something, and he would get down there and dig through my gold pan. And I just I kept hoping that he might find a big old gold nugget, but he never did. <laughs> but he would dig my gold pan and he would get in the water and. We'd you know, pick up rocks and like throw them and so he, uh, he he likes water but never learned to swim too well so I have to really watch him when he's in the water. Um, he's always on a leash. I never let him off a leash. He um I took him to a dog park once just a few years ago and I took the leash off of him and set him down and let him go and he just didn't even know what to do. He just stood there and looked at me like what am I supposed to do? So he's, he's very accustomed, very accustomed to his leash. And when he was really little, that right after I got back from Alaska, um, I had let him down in the front yard after getting groceries. It was nighttime. We had a chain link fence all around the, the front yard. Um, so I wasn't, you know, worried about it. I wasn't concerned about it. So I put him down out there and I'm taking the groceries in. And all of a sudden I hear these breaks out on the road that's by our house and just, someone just slammed on their brakes their toolbox slid forward in their truck and slammed into the back of their truck and I was like oh my gosh so I go running out there I, I wasn't expecting it to be this little guy but it was the truck driver the guy that's driving the truck he's like is that your little dog and I was like oh my gosh yes. I was crying at this point <laughs> I was like oh my gosh and uh, he's just standing there looking around like you know what did I do and the, the guy in the truck he's like I would have ran my truck into, the, I was like, thank you, thank you so much for not hitting him, and he goes, I would have ran my truck off into the ditch over there before I would hit a, an animal, so he was an animal lover, I'm afraid that if he hadn't been an animal lover, so he would have been a goner, but yeah, he was okay, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's traveled with me everywhere that I've ever traveled, he lived with my mom and I in my, uh, in my van, like I said, out west for over a year. And he's been to Alaska four or five times. Uh, he's been on the ferry to Alaska. He's, he's been to more states than most people have been to. He's been all over the United States. Um, he's uh, flown several times, like I said. And he, uh, yeah, he's, he's just been a real traveler. <laughs> um, it's been awesome awesome little dog. Uh, a few years ago though I noticed that he was getting to where he couldn't hardly you know walk for a very long distance so I ended up buying him a, a doggy stroller and he absolutely loves that doggy stroller. You put him in there and he just sits there and he just looks all around and he loves his doggy stroller. He still likes to get out and walk a lot but he'll overdo it sometimes and for the next couple of days he'll be kind of out of it so I have to really monitor how much he 
how much exercise he gets, especially in the heat. Um, so yeah, he's he's been all over. He went to Sitka, Alaska with us and lived in the van with me and my mom there while I worked the whale watching boat season. And he's lived in Anchorage, went through a 7.2 earthquake. So he's a, he's had quite a, quite a life, quite a lot of experiences, a lot more experiences than a lot of people have, you know. Like I said, he's been to over half of the United States and um, Canada, he's been through Canada. We went to Canada when my mom and I drove from um, Tennessee to Canada and caught the ferry to Sitka. So he rode with us all the way to Canada, all the way through Canada. Um, just been all over. Yeah, quite the traveler. And he's, uh, he said he's still really healthy. He, he doesn't seem to have any health issues other than you know his teeth. Um, and his, his allergies that I have to really watch out for. If he gets to having, you know, a really bad allergy, but he had a really bad episode um, earlier this summer, and I ended up having to give him some um, some allergy medication. But for the most part, he doesn't require allergy medication, uh, especially if I keep him on the, the diet with, with the honey in his diet, because I use local honey, and uh, local honey is a really good way to um, keep your allergies under control because the, the honey is really um, really good for allergies uh, if you get the local local raw honey in your area if you have allergies really bad try getting you some local area raw honey and just take a big tablespoon full of it every day sometimes twice a day if you have really bad allergies and so that's what I do for him and it, it really helps him a lot and I was having trouble finding something to keep the fleas off of him because just the last couple of years um, the fleas have gotten really really bad I mean he's been in other states you know Alaska and stuff where they don't have fleas and ticks um, she was there for three years prior to coming back here and so the fleas he's allergic to fleas too I didn't mention that but he is allergic to fleas he can get one flea on him and get a flea bite and he's just not well <laughs> so I have to really try to keep the fleas off of me but the only thing that I found that works in the last couple of years is the Adams dip it's a, in a blue bottle it's by Adams and I just use I have a, a squirt bottle like you would squirt you know, water or window washer or whatever I have a bottle and I just put a tablespoon of that in there and then I fill it up with water and I spray everything with it and I spray him with it because it's a dip you know you normally just dip them down in it but he doesn't really he doesn't really like to be dipped down in the water like that and I don't think it's as good for them as just kind of spraying it on them um, so I spray him I spray everything in the house and that seems to have worked I just got some a couple weeks ago and so far it seems to have really worked on the fleas so if you're looking for something it's good for fleas and I'm not saying that it's going to work every time you may buy a bottle of it and it not do anything it just seems like they're deleting everything a whole lot and nothing's really working very good even the fifty sixty dollar a box stuff is not it's not killing fleas so um, but yeah he, he doesn't doesn't really have that many health problems or issues it's really healthy and, um, yeah, like I said, he doesn't he doesn't hear at all, and he doesn't see really well, but he does good. He's very uh, he's very cuddly, <laughs> and very uh, very dependent. Now that he's getting older, he's he's more and more dependent on me. Um, like I said, he loves his stroller. over the United States. It's, uh, Karen Terrier or Chihuahua? I don't know if I told you. Yeah, I think I said it was, it was Karen Terrier and Chihuahua. But, um, you know, Karen Terrier is like Toto from The Wizard of Oz. That's what, that's what Toto is, is Karen Terrier. Uh, Chihuahuas are the longest, Chihuahuas have the longest lifespan of any dog and Karen Terrier is like number two, so he's got a good chance of living to be 
you know, well into his 20s. Which we hope so. <laughs> you know, I mean, God will take him when he gets ready to take him, but we just hope and pray that he makes it at least a couple more years or so. And, uh, yeah, he's been really healthy. He did, um, back in 2020, I think he might have actually, um, caught the thing that was going around in 2020. I think he might have actually had a little, a little bit of it. He got, got pretty sick and he was down for several days. Um, and he bounced right back from it. And then, oh, I'll tell you this too, guys. He, uh, he had start get, started getting overweight. I feared that he was getting too heavy. He was getting fat. He was getting to be a little fat dog. And I thought, well, I don't know if that's too healthy for him or whatever. So um, I got these, um, I got this probiotics powder that was supposed to help him lose weight but keep them healthy. Well, I, I gave him that. I gave him very small doses of it. And he got to where he wouldn't eat at all. He started losing a lot of weight. He wouldn't eat. He was just acting real lethargic and he just was not doing well at all. So I come to find out that those probiotics will actually alter their thyroid and uh, it will cause thyroidism in, in dogs. So you have to be really careful with those probiotics. I mean, I think it's better to have a, a dog that's a little bit overweight and just, you know, not try to, not try to control their weight so strictly. So I stopped giving him those probiotics and it has taken him three or four years to get back to his um, his weight, his, his desired weight. Um, he's had thyroid issues, he's had to eat very high protein food. Um, that's one reason I give him you know, the hamburger meat. And the honey also is a good way to, to treat thyroidism. So he's doing better now. A very act, overactive thyroid, and it was just eating up all his proteins. Um, so be aware, be be cautious with those. I mean, some dogs they may work great on or whatever, but they didn't work well for him. They really took him down, made him sick. So be careful with those if you use um, if you use those probiotics on a pet. Um, dog. And, um, I think if there's anything else said, he's, he's been everywhere. He's lived in a van. He's just been all over. <laughs> he's just amazing. He's amazing with other animals. He's amazing with children. He loves my nephews and my nephews love him. My my youngest nephew, he'll he'll see Shaggy and sitting in his bed or something, he'll go and like drag his little bed all around the house like he's riding a train or something and Shaggy will just sit there and look around and <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's pretty much it. He has he uh he gets cold very easy, so he has a lot of, you know, little sweaters and, and things like that but can wear if he gets too cold. Uh, in Anchorage, when I lived in Anchorage, I'd take him out to go to the, to the bathroom, and sometimes he would get in snow. Like uh, he couldn't hardly really see anything but his ears sometimes, and he would get these little snowballs just stuck all over him. And sometimes he would just like, help, help, you know, he couldn't move or anything. Um, it's like clean him off, wash him off with some warm water when I got him in the house and then I'd dry him up and put one of his little sweaters on him. And uh, yeah, when he was little though, he loved snow. He would just hop through it and he loved it. He loved water too a lot more than he does now, but he will get in the water a little bit still, but um, he's not that thrilled with it. And he doesn't like the heat either. He, he's, he's an indoor air conditioned dog. <laughs> During the summer, he just doesn't like the heat at all. But I don't either, so <laughs> give me uh, give me cool weather, give me cold weather, give me snow, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. I never complain about the weather though, because you know the weather is what it is, and it's going to change, and then you're going to 
be in different weather and you know just take it one day at a time and whatever the weather is just be thankful to God that you're alive another day to enjoy the weather or whatever it may be and, you know I don't complain about it but I just prefer cold weather and snow He's, uh, like I said, he's lived several different places. He's been to over 50 of the United States. And, like I said, been through an earthquake and flown on an airplane, been through Canada. <laughs> he's had quite a little life. And hopefully he will have uh, a few more years to, to go places and explore things. Um, so yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I just I wasn't sure what I was gonna talk about on Wild Card Wednesday and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna introduce Shaggy to everybody. So you'll see him a lot in a lot of my videos, you'll hear him barking. Um, he's always around somewhere, so I just wanted to kinda introduce y'all to him and, and tell him what a tell y'all what a amazing little dog he is and, and how old he is and everything and all my dogs have always lived to be pretty good ages, so my my um, my Great Pyrenees Husky Wolf mix. He lived to be 15. My Chow lived to be 15, and my Collie lived to be 14. So um, for big dogs, that's you know that's a pretty good age. But um, I've never had a, you know, um, I don't know too many people that have had a dog that have li has lived as long as Shaggy, and been healthy and everything. I guess I'm doing something right. I guess I'm a good doggy mom. <laughs> Seems to think so. Mm -hmm. so. But anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to talk about Shaggy on um, All Card Wednesday. Um, tomorrow uh, I have a new slideshow for you guys. And uh, Tuesday I did Travel Tuesday and I talked about Girdwood and Portage Glacier and the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center and some other things. So my slideshow for Thursday is going to be um, a bunch of pictures and video clips and things of that area. So look for that on Thursday. And then Friday is Firehouse Friday and I just uh, just finished recording for Firehouse Friday. And um, it's about firefighters and firefighter occupational hazards and things like that. Cancer and, and different things that firefighters face every day. So I'm, I'm going to include some pictures of Shaggy at the end of this one, um, just so you guys can see him, um, see him, you know, through the years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of pictures of him when he was really small. I do, but I'm not sure where they are, but um, a photo album somewhere, but um, I do have quite a few pictures from several years back, so I'm going to include some of those at the end. And, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed meeting this little Shaggy. And um, one of these days, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll do some live streams and little Shaggy will probably be joining me on those. Um, so look for those other videos coming up. Check out some of my past videos if you liked this one. And if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that would be great. And um, yeah, check out out some of my other videos if you'd like to and I hope that um, you just have a, you know so I guess that's it for this one so I guess that so I guess that's it for this one so um, thanks for watching if you watched and may God bless all of you and I hope you get out there and find a beautiful view somewhere out there and I will see you on the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.